Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is CJ. Bring you guys an update on the reef tank. I'm going to be cramming about a week's worth of work into one vid. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record all parts of it. But if you have any questions or concerns by the end, definitely drop it down below. idea of how the flow works in my sump. Water comes into the skimmer section over a wall I have built in and it goes down kind of my bubble trap slash drip area. It's going to house my biological and mechanical filtration. It's forced to come underneath into the refugium and then over into the return section. Yeah I tried to think ahead and I designed the media basket to where it could actually be removed from the sump. I designed this sump around my skimmer's requirements first. I know I needed at least 8 inches of water, so I've accommodated that in the first compartment. Second big concern was making sure my return pump did not run dry, so I've isolated that at least 4.5 inches of water. And then after that, the biggest concern was such a small sump was making sure I left enough capacity in here to handle any backflow from the tank, whether it be from the return nozzle or from my overflow box in a power outage. I created my baffles using acrylic sheets and silicone. As you can see, not the neatest tank in the world, but I'm looking for functionality and this should do the job. replace my old skimmer with a newer version so I'm using this method to help cut down my break-in time I definitely don't have to wait another week and a half two weeks as I did the first time so hopefully this does the trick I'll let you guys know if it helps out for sure when I installed this overflow box I want to make sure that my water level stayed just out of sight and also leaving as much room in the tank as possible with such a small sump, my hope is that my return pump will run dry before my tank over floods. At least that's the plan. One of my major concerns is going to be back siphoning from my return line. So I took a screwdriver and poked an extra hole, a little higher than I wanted it to be. But I'd rather be safe than sorry because I really don't have the volume of my sump to handle a lot of back siphoning from my main tank. I'm going to be running two drain lines on this tank just like my last one. I got my main siphon and my emergency drain which stays dry as a backup. Pretty much have a system data in the way I want. I'm sure I'll need some fine tuning once I add my lab rock and my sand and all that good stuff. But so far, so good. One bit of advice I can tell you, whenever you're installing unions, have them as close to your bulkheads as possible. The higher you have them, the less pipe you'll have to deal with whenever you're breaking down your tank. I'm gonna highly recommend using a gate valve on this Herbie style system. My last tank I did use a ball valve, it worked. But when it comes to tuning, I can really tell the difference when I'm using this. Highly recommend it. When I am making adjustments to my gate valve, I have my PVC braced against my tank. It helps keep the pressure off my bulkheads. Now besides having to use a small sump, I actually love this stand. It's lots of room. I mean, it's a really tall stand, 
you can put lots of equipment in here and most importantly if i ever need to make adjustments or upgrade my sump i can actually remove it without having to break down my whole system so that's definitely a big plus yeah i'm undecided on my little dy sump top you know i made it out of light diffuser i may use it may not we'll see but i just want to give you guys an idea how the flow is going through the sump kind of going as designed except for this section here the water's flowing a lot slower than i thought it would so instead of going through the floss it's kind of just trickling over the edge so I'm not sure it's gonna catch as much debris as I thought. So I may have to kind of look at that design and change a little bit of that, of that area. But water flow wise, can't complain. I was actually able to put more water in here than I thought. So it gave me a lot more room as far as my return section. Able to raise my idle top off off of the pump. Yeah, I was gonna have to put it a little closer. So uh, that actually worked out pretty good. In an effort to cut down the noise on my tank, I decided to use some rubber matting underneath my sump and vinyl hosing instead of the PVC and it is leaps and bounds better. I'm highly satisfied with the sound coming from this system. You can barely hear it. As before, I'll never consider a tank ready without doing these tests. So I'm gonna give you an idea what it looks like whenever I kill the power on the system. Very important in this case, because this water from this overflow box and any back siphoning at all is coming down into my system. I'm gonna show you guys just how much it raises up. As you can see, cutting it close, I actually have room to spare and really I had more room than that I just been adding water to the system because I had so much room left so uh, it was a pleasant surprise I calculated that I needed about two gallons of room in this sump and I actually needed about a gallon after it was said and done so it's better to be safe than sorry I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power back on for you guys all right after restarting the power first thing you'll notice water level in this sump drops immediately it's a lot faster than my last sump. I'm assuming because the tank's so small, the water volumes are so small that it reacts a lot faster. But uh, everything is looking good. Now one word of advice I can give you guys, be very mindful of your return pump running dry. With such a small sump and a small volume of water, it may not be enough water in your sump to go through your display tank, overflow in your box, and come back down before the, the pump does run dry. So. In my case, I actually had to, you know, add water to the system at least as much as I could without it failing my power outage test and overflowing my sump. Second thing I did to combat it, as you can see, that is my emergency drain running right into my return section, not into the skimmer section. Pretty much that emergency line only picks up water whenever I am uh, restarting my tank and it never picks up water whenever the siphon's going. So it does exactly what I want it to do. So anyone that's making a small sump like this, highly recommend you route your plumbing in this way. And that will uh, help you kind of beat the odds with dealing with such a small sump. At least it's helped me. Now with my tank, it takes about 10 minutes after restarting before everything stabilizes and the siphon starts again and the emergency drain stops picking up water. But that's fine with me. It's pretty much self-sustaining, self-starting. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Now, as you guys know, I try to keep my videos as short as possible. In this case, I had to cram a lot of information. So if I miss something or you got questions or concerns, you know, feel free, like, comment, you know, subscribe. Drop me a question down below. I'll definitely answer it for you. And as always, y'all be easy.